Now that we're on the hour, let's get started. A very warm welcome to everyone to our Cognite application developer session. Today, we're going to be peeking into the real digital transformation. How you as an industrial app developer can develop, operationalize and scale different data-driven industrial apps to improve production, reduce waste, increase maintenance efficiencies and make our critical industries more sustainable. Our focus today is not on how we at Cognite have built select reference apps, but how you can build your cool apps faster, easier, and above all, with confidence in the real-time data streams and the data models that underpin your app's value. In short, today is about unleashing your creativity to have the most impact on your business. First, however, some housekeeping notices. Today's Cognat application developer session duration is 60 minutes, featuring three different developer archetypes, the casual developer, the React professional developer, and the Python preferring data scientist working in industry. This event is of course being fully recorded, and the recording is available on hub.cognite.com, our 24-7 user and developer community. If you haven't yet, we do invite you to open another browser tab. You can do it now, for example. Hit hub.cognite.com and join our developer community. You can do it today. You can do it whilst I'm talking here. Regarding the Q&A, we will be doing a new kind of a community Q&A, allowing you to interact more broadly with Cognite product and engineering experts, as well as with your peers at other companies. And that this is not just today, but from today onwards, indefinitely, always on. Very practically speaking, we will be hosting today's Q&A on Cognite Hub. Now, you can post your questions on Cognite Hub at any time during today's session. Of course, you can use the questions column in the webinar tool as well, or afterwards. The Q&A discussion, before it diffuses into more specific channels on Cognite Hub, will take place in Cognite Hub today. Now, last but not least, and on behalf of everyone at Cognite, thank you for joining us today. We do appreciate your participation. Once again, welcome to our Cognite Community Application Developer Session. My name is Petteri, and it is my pleasure to be your host today. I'm joined today by a strong roster of fellow Cogniters who, in addition to you, our audience, and the developer community on Cognite Hub, will drive today's payload. Each presenter will briefly introduce themselves as they're up on our agenda. First, before we get to the developer archetypes, it will be Geir, Cognite co-founder and CTO. Geir will give you a guided tour of Cognite Data Fusion, our open industrial data operations platform. He will highlight the platform's key features, specifically tailored for industrial data management, so that industrial application developers, like yourselves, can focus on what you really care about, creating business value, not fighting with non-tabular data types or struggling to operationalize the needed data in the right data model, only having to revert back to the same struggles again when scaling your model for every similar piece of equipment across your fleets. As Guide will cover a lot of ground guiding you across Cognitive Diffusion, there is unfortunately not enough time to focus equally on the depth. For depth, we look forward to welcoming you on Cognite Hub and of course on Cognite Docs, our fully public platform API documentation portal alike. Now, second up and the first of our application developer archetypes is Morton. Morton is Director of Strategic Alliances and a, an avid non-professional application developer. Morton will show you the platform Gary quickly demos being applied to building data dashboards, an often undervalued application category for its simplicity, yet one which remains central to all true digital transformations. There simply is no digital transformation as long as the vast majority of our industrial workforce is reliant on select bottleneck professional occupations, data engineers and professional developers namely, all the time again and again. The art of great industrial platforms starts with making data dashboard development available to us all, not a service dependent on the IT department or on third-party IT consultants. Convenience here forms the bedrock of developer empowerment, and it is convenience which Cognite Data Fusion delivers to the data dashboard developer, as you're about to see. Third up today, we have the fabulous Dan. Dan is senior software engineer at Cognite. 
he's going to take you from data dashboard development, which of course in itself is much more than just plotting data from a singular source system onto a cloud available dashboard for sharing, as Morton's demos will show, but Dan will take you into the world of professional React application development. Dan will illustrate his developer experience through two of Cognite's composable reference application examples, namely Cognite Maintain and Cognite Best Day. Dan's perspective will not be on the business value of these reference apps, however, but on the developer experience of developing, operationalizing, and scaling such advanced, professionally developed applications, taking advantage of the multitude of industrial application developer services provided by Cognite Data Fusion, the world's only open industrial data operations platform. Now here, I'd like to call out that all of the front-end components you will see featured in the two Composable Reference App examples are readily available for you to use in your app experiences, including the browser-optimized 3D rendering engine. Now, last, but of course not least, comes Jake. Jake is Cognite Head of Data Science, working in our Strategic Customer Services Division. Jake will take us to what's arguably the hottest area of digital transformation, developing data science applications. Now, the example today will show how you can easily develop a data-driven decision support system, more specifically a monitoring system for a heat exchanger. In what is a large Python-based developer experience, featuring Cognite's Python SDK and most data scientists' favorite Python-based community tools. As we all know, developing industrial data science solutions is only marginally about the actual model development and model training. Much more is about searching and discovering the right data, including asset details, that are relevant for addressing the use case at hand and essential to identifying the features needed for our model development. From there on, it is all about convenience that is provided by open interfaces and SDKs to work in a developer environment that is familiar to you. Now supercharged with all the platform features of Coconut Data Fusion, of course merely one or two lines of code away. To summarize, we will show you how different through, although these are increasingly diffusing as personas, industrial application developer persona experiences are all made easier using Cognite Data Fusion, ranging from developing and scaling out contextualized real-time data dashboards to React applications, all the way to data science solutions based on Python. Now, Cognite Data Fusion makes industrial application development easier by allowing you as an application developer to focus on your app's business value rather than fighting with the underlying myriad of complex data and data operations infrastructure. Before I let the gentleman take over, however, and as such, take us two large steps forward in today's session, let us take one small step back and contextualize why our businesses deserve a better industrial application developer experience. Now, the first is the very notions that time and change themselves have changed. Everything now happens faster and it will only accelerate. How you develop, operationalize and scale software solutions needs to change. You as a developer deserve better especially as industrial data landscape by itself is one of the toughest to work with already. Second is openness. The era of silos and many highly segregated personas within a development process is over, both across the data landscape itself, but also within our development processes. Every one of our customers at Cognite is already using many different developer environments and will very likely be using even more by 2025. Your industrial data operations infrastructure needs to power them all. We simply cannot build yet another silo. Third is business and OTIT alignment. Now, this is about empowering business stakeholders to participate directly in the application development experience versus treating them as passive receivers. There are simply not enough professional developers to go around, nor is it purposeful to retain app development to the few only that is simply not transformative. We need to go beyond that. Last, multimodality and composability everywhere. Full code, low code, and no code is a fluid spectrum. Everything as code, as well as end-to-end -end GUI wizards, can and should and will coexist. All experiences will be just as good as your industrial data operations infrastructure that serves them. By now, 
I've probably repeated industrial data operations infrastructure quite a few times. So let me put this in context for you still before we head over to the live demos. What is quickly becoming commonplace application developer experience when working with enterprise data for enterprise apps deserves, or rather has to, be elevated to the same level of convenience and simplicity for industrial OT, ET and visual data heavy application development workloads alike. With the right application development architecture in place, you will not only see an acceleration of the speed of development within current development tracks, but more critically, you will tenfold your application developer army by enabling your existing workforce to unleash their creativity through self-service industrial app development empowerment. Now that is digital transformation. True openness is also about embracing specialization, however. Not in silos, but in an interconnected environment and with 100% open interfaces. Nowhere else does this become as clear as within your data infrastructure. A data management is evolving from an unattainable one platform to a pragmatic data platform's mesh. It is paramount that all the data infrastructure you put in place is open and impartial to application development frameworks it serves. Just like for app development, a one-size-fits-all t-shirt data infrastructure rarely, if ever, delivers on optimal developer experience. But now, let's get to developer action. Starting with Gair and a guided tour of Cognitive Data Fusion, our open industrial data operations platform. Take it away, Gair. Thank you, Pateri. Cognite Data Fusion solves the hardest problem of industrial application development, which is to take data from a wide variety of sources and bring all of that data together into an application in a contextualized and structured manner in the structure that the application expects and understands with lineage so it can be trusted and in a secure and highly performant manner. So Cognite Data Fusion, and this is the user interface of Cognite Data Fusion, takes you through this entire journey of integrating with existing data sources, uh, both operational technology and IT and uh, engineering technology data sources, contextualizing that data, exploring the data and building solutions based on that data, and of course, managing the access, lineage, data quality, monitoring, and so on. So. We start here on the left where we have the extractors that you can deploy where the data sits, either on the edge or, or in uh, corporate networks or in uh, cloud environments. Then the data goes into the staging area where you can look at the data and get a good understanding of what uh, the data is like. You can do data profiling here, so you can look at this particular table and uh, what kind of uh, data sits in there. So this represents an asset hierarchy and you can look at kind of what nodes have the most children and so on. So this is a very useful tool after you've extracted a database to go in and see that it actually matches your expectations of what the data should look like. Then you have data transformations, which is based on Apache Spark, so it can handle quite a lot of data in parallel. Uh, here you're basically writing a SQL, uh, uh, Spark SQL, which uh, transforms the data from the source uh, data model into the domain data model of Cognite Data Fusion. And here you can schedule this to run uh, and you can uh, monitor the progress. Then of course we process 3D models and optimize those and you can monitor these extraction pipelines. Contextualization is really where the magic happens. This is where connections are inferred between data objects coming from different data sources of different data types. This is where structure is inferred from unstructured data. Uh, and so it's really the heart of populating an industrial uh, knowledge graph. So if you look at uh, entity matching, it's a, uh, a process which, uh, where you essentially take two data sets. So let's find the data set here. 
of uh, uh, type time series. So we'll take all of these time series coming from a historian and we'll try to match them to another data set. So we'll select the uh, assets data sets here coming from uh, SAP, I believe. And here we can give it some hints as to what metadata fields to look for patterns in. We can use previously trained uh, labeled data as training data. We can you know, choose between different algorithms, uh, but the defaults work quite well out of the box. And so uh, what this does is essentially it produces a long list of predicted matches, and it even infers rules from that so that you can quickly kind of see what the model is doing. Uh, you can inspect the logic of the model here. So here we have that list of predicted matches, uh, which we can group by patterns. So if you look at this pattern, it's taking you know these blocks and matching them together. And if we confirm this, it becomes a pipeline. So new data that matches this pattern is also matched. And we can go in, we can quickly reach a very high uh, degree of matching between these two data sets. So here we have another rule with a bit lower confidence. And we can do the same thing for um, 3D models as well. So that's exactly the same process. You select a, a data set with a 3D model and uh, a data set that you want to match the components of that 3D model to. I won't do it now because it takes a bit of time but it's essentially the same process. And you have the same thing with uh, engineering drawings. So you can extract structure from uh, engineering drawings and uh, get interactive uh, models out of it. So that's using uh, optical character recognition and uh, image or object detection in images. And you can see this dumb PDF has now become a, a smart clickable PNID and you can click on the various elements and you'll see kind of the time series and assets associated with, uh, with uh, um, a particular element here. Now, this is how you're building that connected digital twin. Of course, you can now explore it in this explore section so, for instance, we can start with the 3D model and um, this rendering component that we're using is called Reveal. It's a very high performance uh, and uh, you can watch these really large 3D models uh, even on handheld devices using this viewer because it streams just the geometry that's necessary to render what uh, you see and this can be used as a component in your application so we open sourced uh, the reveal viewer so you can use it uh, when building new applications so here uh, of course you can search you can find various components uh, where they're situated in the uh, 3d model and uh, we also get all the metadata about each component here so for instance we can go in and look at this particular uh, asset. We can see the metadata about it, what other uh, time series are associated with it. We go into the time series, we see that data, and we can also view the lineage through the data set here. So this particular time series is coming from this data set. And if we uh, navigate to that, we can see all the other data in this particular data set. We preview this data, we see its governance status, who's the owner of it, uh, labels, we can see the lineage of the data set, so it's coming from uh, Pi Historian, and uh, this extraction pipeline ran 37 minutes ago, and you can see when it was last updated, what raw tables it went through, and so on, and access control, who has access to this data. Now, when building applications, the applications typically want the data to be structured in a particular way. And we accomplish this through something that we call templates. So with templates, what you can do is essentially create your own schema 
so basically, uh, if I'm building an application uh, that regards gas wells, I can create this schema for gas wells uh, with these named properties for each, each gas well and uh, access the data through that uh, lens or template. And Cognitive Diffusion also has tools for me to populate this data model. So here you have my wells and I have these properties that I just defined. Uh, now I can you know, start to fill these in. But as you can see, there are these suggestions that start to pop up. So as I populate this, a supervised machine learning algorithm is um, using this data uh, to uh, you know, find patterns in how I'm populating this and suggest to me how to populate uh, this for the other wells. So let's try to find the gas flow rate for this particular well here. Uh, and yeah, this one looks promising. Let's add it. Uh, and if I now refresh the suggestions, maybe it will figure out how to fill in these gas flow rates. Yeah, you can see now it has suggestions for these as well. So now I can go in, I can approve these suggestions, and I've quickly populated my um, application specific data model here, which I can access. In, uh, in in my programming language of choice. So here I built a model for the productivity uh, index of a uh, gas well. And here, what I'm essentially able to do is I can query this data model, so the gas wells, and get these variables, the bottom of pressure, the reservoir pressure, etc., that I just defined. And this makes every well look exactly the same uh, to my application, regardless of where that data actually came from and how it was contextualized. So if I run, if I run this algorithm now, I'll see that uh, it runs over my four wells. And if I'm building a um, dashboard out of this, I can use the same graph query, uh, GraphQL syntax to query this uh, new data model that I created. So this is drift variable is what I computed in the script. And if I run this, I'll see that you know, I, I get a nice uh, dashboard. And I can see that this well number seven is not doing so well. Um, if I want to scale this, of course, I only need to go here, add another instance. So let's see if I have more wells here add that and then new suggestions should pop up for how to populate these properties improve these and if I rerun this Python algorithm or application now it will run over all five wells if I refresh my dashboard it now has five wells as well so that is uh, some of the power that Cognite Data Fusion gives you uh, to uh, speed up application development uh, uh, drastically. Of course, there are many more features such as advanced access control, you know, uh, time series data quality monitoring, uh, and so on, which unfortunately we don't have time to cover today. Um, so now. I'll hand it over to Morten, who will focus on building dashboards. Morten, take it away. Thank you, Geir. My name is uh, Morten Andreasrøm, and today I'm going to show you how you can use Grafana on top of Cognitive Diffusion. With Cognitive Diffusion, you and your team can use the tools and applications you already know to build, operationalize, and scale data-driven solutions. Typical tools our customers prefer are Grafana, Power BI, Power Apps, and of course, Cognat's own out-of-the-box tools like Cognat Charts and Cognat Air. On this slide, you see a few examples of solutions developed with this ecosystem of tools, ranging from machine performance and production quality or use, to more advanced condition monitoring and predictive maintenance solutions. 
Today I will focus on Grafana, a simple but powerful no-code dashboarding tool. There are many reasons why Grafana has become so popular among our customers. Two of them are the ease of use with its out-of-the-box components and its ability to visualize and analyze real-time data. However, when Grafana is powered with contextualized data and the capabilities of cognitive diffusion, it becomes even more powerful. Uh, what my customers tell me it, uh, is that it becomes easier to develop valuable insight as they get access to both your IT and OT data and can thus create analytics that combines the information from these sources. It also becomes quicker to scale the solutions across different equipment, production lines and production sites with the templatized data schemas. And with that, let me show you how it works. What you see on this uh, Grafana dashboard uh, is a set of operational overviews uh, for some painting machines uh, for a supplier to the automotive industry. You see the current OE calculations for all the uh, all machines uh, on a different uh, on a specific production site, covering three different production facilities, and you can see there are five of them. These OE calculations are ingested directly from Cognitive Data Fusion uh, through our Grafana connector and the specific OEE calculations are calculated with Python code, which is hosted and run on schedules inside Cognitive Data Fusion, leveraging our Cognite functions capability. In addition to this high-level overview, I can see specific information for the different production facilities. For instance, in this case, for production facility number B2, I can uh, open the drop-down overview, and here we go, I have some different uh, key operational information. For instance, the available and planned runtime. I have some production information, for instance, the planned quantity to produce, the actual produced quantity, and for instance, the number of good parts. In addition, I have some production events, uh, both historical and live events, coming from my MES system. In addition to this overview for production facility number B2, I can, of course, open uh, the information from production facility number B3 and B9 as well. I can open them and as you see I have all the information at my hands. The next thing I wanted to show you was how you can create one of these visualizations on your own. The first thing I do is simply to add an empty panel. And as you can see, with our uh, with the connector between uh, Grafana and Cognitive Diffusion, there are different ways for me to fetch in the data I need. For instance, I can select all time series connected to one specific asset. I can write a specific query where I leverage the rich metadata and labeling information of the industrial knowledge graph to fetch the specific information I need. I can also use data templates, which is supported by GraphQL, to fetch the data. In this case, I would like to fetch some specific time series um, for the OE calculations for one machine. Let me simply just search for it. Select it from the dropdown, and as you can see, it's visualized right away. I can also change the layout of it. For instance, I select the gauge bar, the heat map, uh, the gauge overview. But in this case, I think, the, I think that the graph overview was the best one. I can also change how the graph should look. I can, for instance, remove the area fill. I can get the legend to be presented on the right side. And with some simple clicks, I can also show some key calculations, for instance, the minimum, the maximum, and the average values. Let's apply it, and let's drag it so it covers the entire page. And as you can see, it's pretty easy. So this was kind of the, the simple stuff of uh, Grafana and how it can be used with Cognitive Diffusion. But there are of course more advanced things you can do, do as well, for instance leveraging the templates functionality of Cognitive Diffusion. Data templates provide some additional means of fetching the data inside Cognitive Diffusion. Instead of fetching the data directly from the industrial knowledge graph, with templates you can define use case specific data schemas that eases the development process and speeds up the scaling of the solutions. 
Therefore, I made a data template that structured the data needed to develop the OE calculations and the Grafana dashboard. And of course, this template could be used for other solutions as well. Let me jump into Cognitive Fusion uh, to show you what templates is, and afterwards I will show you how we can use that in Grafana. So this is the front page of Cognitive Fusion, uh, where I, for instance, can select the template management functionality. What you see in this overview are different data templates, which I've made to power different uh, use cases. And on the end, I have a specific template, which I made for this uh, Grafana dashboard. What you see in this data template, it's a bunch of different rows, where each row represents one specific uh, painting machine that is displayed inside my Grafana dashboard. And each column represents different parameters connected to it, uh, for instance, the planned and available runtime, which I used to develop my OEE calculation. In addition to kind of neatly structuring my data, the beauty of templates is that the data is now curable with GraphQL. So if I open the Query Explorer, you can see that I've already written a simple query that fetches my OE calculations. If I click Run, you can see the output of it. So the query is basically fetching all the data from the OEE template and all the items within it, that's basically all different painting machines. And for each of these items, it's giving me the name and also the output of the OEE calculations both the value and the timestamp. Uh, so what I now can do is basically to take uh, this uh, query and uh, paste it inside Grafana, and that will visualize uh, my OEE calculations. And that was basically what I did to create this OEE overview. As you can see, if I go into editing mode, you can see the exact same query inside uh, the editor. The beauty now with templates, in addition to kind of neatly giving my, me the data I need to uh, develop these visualizations, is that it's really easy for me now to scale uh, this OE overview for additional painting machines as well. If I go back to my template, I can simply add a new painting machine. And when I add it, that will automatically be populated to Grafana as well. Let me show you. So I'm adding a new instance, finding a new painting machine, for instance this one, just select it from the dropdown and click add. Let's also give it a simple name. What you might have no noticed is that we have also machine learning algorithms running behind the scenes that automatically gives me suggestions of what data that I should populate inside the data template. I can take these suggestions, open them, control them, and approve them one by one. I can also, of course, look at all suggestions at once and approve all of them in basically a batch mode. And with that, my template has automatically been populated with data. This is, a, is of course a really simple illustration, but just imagine how much time this would have saved me if I were to scale this template across hundreds or thousands of different painting machines across my production lines or my production facilities. If I now go back to Grafana, you will see that the OEE overview has suddenly been scaled to not only cover five different painting machines, but six. So, as you can see, uh, Grafana, when it's powered by Cognitive Fusion, is basically as easy as Excel, just with live IT and OT data. And with that, I'm going to hand the word over to Dan, who is going to talk more about Cognat Betain and Cognat Bestay. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, hello, my name is Dan. I'm a software engineer here at Cognite. And for the past four years, I've been developing applications on top of Cognite Data Fusion. And today I'd like to share some of that experience with you so you can see how easy, how flexible it can be, how efficient and scalable we can be when it comes to building applications. 
in order to do so, I'd like to show you two applications today. Uh, and we'll kick straight off. Uh, we'll go straight into Cognite Maintain. Cognite Maintain is an application built for our onshore planners. And what it does is it breaks down these traditional data and organizational barriers to bring AI and seamless collaboration into your maintenance process. And it does that by taking all of your standard store systems, and that could be risks, that could be work orders, that could be assets. It takes all of that that is often split into several different silos and chunks and uh, contextualizes it, places it into CDF and visualizes it to the user. And this is a great example of a scaling story that we have here as well. Uh, the, the rapid scaling that is enabled by CDF. We took this beginning uh, with a single asset for one of our customers, uh, starting with an MVP phase for only two months. And then over the course of four months, we were able to grow the application greatly, including 3D models, Gantt chart, scheduling information, as well as scaling it out to over 30 assets in just a space of four months. A uh, true scale-up story. Um, but I'd like to show you more directly uh, the application itself. So I've opened up Cognite Maintain here. And to the right, you can see first off all of the activities that are being ingested from the source systems into Cognite Data Fusion and displayed here. And the first thing to kind of show off here is the filtering capabilities that are available. And so as a user, the first thing I might do is go in and select a campaign I'm currently interested in. This might be a shutdown campaign, for example. And the filtering capabilities here are all powered by Cognite Data Fusion. You can see how flexible uh, we can be with our filtering. We can select uh, electricians and mechanics for this particular work package to really get to the details of where or what I am really interested in, what I want to see. And this connection that is apparent here, this is all connected via the JavaScript SDK that is available. There is a tool uh, readily available for any application developer, publicly hosted uh, documentation, ready to go. Then to the left over here, we have an example of a reusable component that Cognite also provides out. In this example, this is the Reveal uh, 3D Viewer. And first things first, we can see the contextualization in play here. So uh, provided by Cognite Data Fusion, uh, no developer interaction really necessary. We can easily connect this activity to an asset and then that asset is therefore connected to the 3D model and thus allows us to zoom into a particular area and see the activities that are also happening around that area to help uh, the optimization efforts of the planner. And let's talk for a moment about the 3D model itself because you can imagine a 3D model of this scale coming directly from the customer is several gigabytes large, uh, four, five, six, seven gigabytes. Uh, they're quite large uh, models and seeing that inside of the web browser is no small feat. And so that's where Reveal comes in to save the day, essentially. Uh, what would have been a former project of its own took an evening of work because of that power Reveal uh, gives you that reusable component. And there's no magic involved here either. Uh, the documentation is readily available for anyone to view. And so any application developer with simple experience of building web applications can come in and do the exact same thing as we have done here. This is also true for several of our components, including the authentication and login flow. We have the 2D flow that is also available here to be able to view 2D documents with, again, that contextualization on top of it. As well as our advanced workspacing tool is also available uh, for the use. I can go ahead, I can drag in my 2D documents and I can draw on these documents as well, as well as see that contextualization overlaid on top. All of this is readily available, documented for any application developer to use, which greatly impacts the speed of development. And with that wraps up uh, Cognite Maintain for the moment. Now let's hop over to our second application, Cognite Best Day. Cognite Best Day is our production optimization application, which helps customers understand and gain insight into their production performance. 
And Conley Best Day is another example of our scaling story, taking a few test wells in the proof of concept application and scaling that up to over 8,000 wells. And in this case, done very trivially. Yeah, as mentioned by a VP of one of our customers, the, the cost of scaling is inconsequential. Uh, now we have a list of features uh, over to the right, but I'd much rather go in and show you those features in the application itself. So this is Cognite Best Day. Uh, and the first screen that we have here is the whole list of all of our wells that we currently have active in our system. And uh, as mentioned previously, this can be up to 8,000 wells and even beyond. And what this enables you to do is to be able to see your wells as a whole ordered and sorted by the ones that are producing the most, that are producing the least, at least. Uh, the ones that are the most efficient, but perhaps most importantly, the ones that are currently lacking, the ones that are least efficient. Now this list is generated and powered by Cognate Data Fusion's templates feature. And so adding a new row to this, adding a new well, is as simple as a click away. And adding several more thousand wells is a few API lines of code away. Uh, it's no problem at all. And so we can click and deep dive into one of our wells to see all the relevant information we need in order to make good productive decisions, such as being able to see the current production rate, rates for the well, the pressure, the temperature, and whether that well is artificially lifted or not. We get all of that information readily available to us via these time series charts. Now these time series charts are also a reusable component that any developer can go ahead and start using and uh, connect it to the CDF to see all the different time series data available. And the power of this time series chart, and while the powers of not only the chart, but CDF in general, is that speed that you can fetch that data at. We can see here seven days of data. You can easily and quickly enhance that to 90 days and much more beyond over the past two years of data, all aggregated within CDF for you. And now we can move on to what's on the chart and probably one of the cruxes of best day is this best day calculation. And so what historically companies will often do is that they have their own method of calculating the capacity of a well. Uh, and this is often driven by kind of gut feeling, subjective engineers uh, experience, uh, which can lead to issues such as an optimistic engineer might say uh, capacity is higher and pessimistic engineers might be lower. What Best Day provides is a data-driven approach to finding out that capacity. And that capacity is calculated inside of Cognitive Data Fusion via intelligent models that take into account the historic production values of that world, as well as physics-based calculations uh, that are run on our backend. And so you can see here, there's a quite a dramatic difference between what a uh, engineer, a subjective approach might say versus what uh, the Best Day algorithm says so it's MPC being the uh, alternate, the, the latter approach. And this model is run and hosted again on Cognitive Data Fusion, uh, which cancels out a lot of that infrastructure cost that often would fall on a full stack developer. Uh, instead of them having to spend their time setting up this infrastructure, setting up scheduling, setting up all of this, this surrounding stuff, they can focus on what they're good at. They can focus on what's important. And that's all I have today. Uh, this has been a glimpse into the life of an application developer who builds things on top of Cognitive Data Fusion. Hopefully we've shown you how we've been able to accelerate and scale our development process with ease uh, throughout. Uh, thanks for listening, and I'll hand it over to our next host. Thanks, Dan. My name is Jake Bowman, and I'm Head of Data Science in Cognite's Customer Services Division. We work with Cognite Data Fusion customers to implement data-driven dec decision support systems, and we'd like to take you through how we do this. We'll use Fusion, the Cognite Python SDK, and some fine engineering brains, admittedly not mine, to work through a heat exchange and monitoring solution. But first, a note on how we approach data science problems. There are many slides like this out there on the data science process, so I won't spend too much time here. But I would like to highlight is the importance of iteration and domain knowledge. A good solution is optimized end to end, not just in the model, but in the UX as well. So I'll try to cover a bit of everything. And as you'll see in today's example, domain knowledge is essential to understand the system. 
Over to today's example. A monitoring system for this heat exchanger, a gas export cooler on an offshore platform. We could, of course, just dive in and try and see which time series data are available. But trust me, on industrial systems like this, there are typical, typically thousands. And so we should approach this from a system perspective. It's really important to gain a basic understanding of the heat exchanger and the surrounding process. And this kind of logical overview that we have up on the slide is a great place to start. For those not familiar with such an equipment, they function in a pretty easy to understand way. Heat is transferred from the process medium to a cooling medium over a large surface area. If that surface area gets a bit dirty, or if the flow of the cooling medium is obstructed, then we'll of course have less efficient heat transfer and less efficient operation of the equipment. Corrosion can also occur, and in severe cases, this can cause lead to leakage, which can lead to contamination of the process or cooling medium, or even external leakage, which will require a shutdown of the plant. And those are the kinds of events that everyone remembers. Our objective is to monitor for these issues so that we can detect them and plan for corrective activities as early as possible. There are a number of ways to go about this, from process simulators, such as Unisim and Hisis, to machine learning techniques. Today we'll implement some simple engineering calculations and then talk about how that can be extended with machine learning and decision support interfaces. Armed with a high level understanding and some key identifiers, let's jump into Fusion and start to explore the system. Welcome back to Cognite Data Fusion. And from here, we can find ourselves to the data for this heat exchanger quite quickly. Let's start with the global search functionality. We type in the identifier for this heat exchanger and it pops up with a few search results immediately. It's great because it lists all of the useful data that we need to get to know this equipment. As a data scientist, it's great to look at some of the technical documentation so that we can see a bit on a deeper level how the equipment is actually functioning. And so we can look into the linked files and pull up one of the technical engineering diagrams. Here you can see a more detailed overview of how the system is working. These kinds of documents are something that I fondly recall printing out and putting across my kitchen floor with five or six different colors of highlighters and many, many others. Cognite Data Fusion gives you a better experience by automatically passing the various instrumentation and connecting the time series data. So we can reverse all of these technical documents to understand what instrumentation we have. We can pick, for example, this pressure transmitter and see a bit what data is actually available. And we can see quite quickly, as expected, there is some time series corresponding to the pressure measurements of this instrumentation. As we develop, we normally spend quite a lot of time in Fusion working through the data and shopping, you could say, for different variables to include in our machine learning models. But of course, then it soon becomes time for us to uh, work with that data in a Jupyter notebook and start to program up our machine learning model. What I'd like to show you next is the Python SDK, which is really the main interface that we use to work with data in Cognite Data Fusion. From here, we'd normally head over to do some exploratory analysis and initial model development in a Jupyter notebook using the Cognite Python SDK. I'd like to take a few moments to take you through some of the important features of the Cognite Python SDK and how to use it. The main point of interaction with the Python SDK is the Cognite Client. The Cognite Client lets you access all of the resources that are in Cognite Data Fusion, from data points to events to files to labels and to time series. The SDK makes it easy to reverse all these resources and query them and tab completion is an absolute lifesaver in, in your notebook. There's also deep pandas integration that lets you explore the data and pull it down and work with it with the tools that you know very, very well. We'd of course like to explore the data corresponding to the heat exchanger 23HA9114. To do that, we can search, same as we searched in Fusion, but in this case, we use the Python SDK. Executing this code, we can see that the search results, or at least the first one, matches the equipment that we need. In Cognite Data Fusion, an industrial 
data in general. We have a hierarchical data structure that represents the systems, equipments, and components of a plant. It's actually very, very important to be able to query at the different levels of this hierarchy to, for example, be able to ask, give me all of the flow transmitters in system 23. This would search through all of the subsystems and components and return the flow transmitters from what we call the subtree. The SDK gives a number of ways to do this, and one of the simpler ones is to just use the subtree element of a certain asset object. This returns all of the assets that are nested in the hierarchy beneath this equipment. We can also search for the time series by building a time series query that specifies the, the, the subtrees that we want to examine. This query, for example, returns all of the time series that are available on the heat exchanger and its child components. We also need to be able to identify certain instrumentations and with the variance in the different kinds of naming conventions for sensors and their tags, uh, search functionality in Cognite Data Fusion is very, very useful. Here we build up a time series search for the instrument PDT92602 and we add a filter that restricts the search to only assets in the heat exchanger subtree. We can go, look, go ahead and look at the search results and see that the instrumentation that we were indeed looking for is returned as the first result. When we know the time series identifier, it's quite easy to pull the data points that are stored in that time series. Data points are simply the timestamp value pairs. We can pull down a nicely structured pandas data frame that's a nice format to work with for downstream analysis. And of course, it's quite easy to simply plot these data. Now that we've gotten to know the Python SDK, let's jump back to the heat exchanger problem. Those engineering brains that I mentioned have given me an equation to calculate the thermal resistance for this heat exchanger, which is an important diagnostic that's calculated from the mass flow rates. Let's implement that. It'll be useful right away, and I have a feeling it's going to be a great feature to feed into our machine learning models. I'll spare you the implementation of this calculation. Like many engineering calculations, there are a few different formulae and quite a complicated calculation to implement. There are some constants, like a correction factor, there are some differential temperatures to calculate, and there's a logarithmic numerator and denominator. Imagine that we've also completed the exercise using the Cognite SDK, Fusion, and other techniques to identify all of the various sensors for these calculations. We, might for, we could perhaps store the external identifiers like this, mapping them to the physical quantities to prepare for running the calculation. However, there's an important step to take here. Data contextualization is really about building, bringing the most invaluable data, the metadata, into one place where it can be maintained for the benefit of other use cases. Building up the data foundation step by step and never wasting the valuable effort that we did in tracking the correct sensor identifiers. To keep this data, these mappings that we have identified, inside of the code of the notebook would be a great mistake. Cognite templates help us, helps us to create simple and scalable application data models that can be shared across multiple use cases and equipment. It brings the metadata out of the code, which is essential as we scale our calculation. Cognite templates provides a valuable metadata interface that even the subject matter expert can use to capture metadata on additional uh, heat exchanges, which is essential for us to scale. In this case, we've created a template for heat exchanger monitoring. And we can go in there and see a table of all of the mappings we have for various heat exchangers and the physical properties along here. This is great because it's a governed accessible interface that allows engineers to access this data. Then back to the notebook to pull the data down from templates. To read metadata from Cognite templates, we use GraphQL, which is a well-known tool from the front-end application development world. In data science, we learn enough to get by and write the queries that we need to pull down the metadata. This is easily enough and easy to understand, and with some py basic Python transformation, we're able to recover the mappings for our sensor unique identifiers to the physical quantities that our calculation expects. This is an important way to specify the interface for our calculation to the data. Moving forward from there, it's another data points query to retrieve all of these different sensor data and map it into one data frame that we can then feed to our calculation. 
easily enough. Again, we have our external identifiers. We choose to take the aggregate of average. For interest, we can look at six weeks ago and take the data up until now. And again, for interest, we use the granularity of one day. We can run this and see the various data that we need coming neatly out into a table, which we can then do basic pandas to apply our engineering calculation and determine the thermal resistance. At this point, we could continue to model indefinitely in a notebook, and sometimes we do, but often it's wise to ship this calculation to CDF to enrich the data foundation. We'll know it's there, and we can build on it in further models and decision support tools that we build. We can also get some richer quality assurance by sharing this calculated quantity with subject matter experts through Cognite charts, for example. To schedule the calculations and models, we use Cognite functions with GitHub automation. Cognite Functions is our own lightweight serverless compute framework that we use for scheduled mini-batch and event-driven architectures. Many of our customers use public cloud serverless frameworks and container orchestrators. They do the job, of course, but we at Cognite like Cognite Functions because it's opinionated in a way that makes our deployments simpler. As we move over to deploy our function, we must move our development over to a project structure that will handle the deployment across multiple environments, like dev, test, and prod and scale the calculation across multiple equipment. This is our templated project structure, which comes with testing and automation templates. You'll find links to the Cognite Hub post. You'll find links in the Cognite Hub post following the presentation. Hopefully, the code looks quite familiar by now. We have the engineering calculation implemented here. We have the GraphQL query that specifies the data interface here. And we have the code to retrieve the data points from Cognitive Data Fusion over here, together with some additional code that writes the calculated results back to Cognitive Data Fusion. Now, to scale this code across multiple heat exchanges, we only really needed to abstract out one thing, and that's the identification of the heat exchanger. That's now captured in our deployment configuration, which I can show you over here in the schedules. These parameters are what specify the deployment on a particular heat exchanger, and to scale this code across multiple heat exchanges simply requires you to create another schedule and provide it with the identifiers for that heat exchanger. Nice and simple. To return to the data science process, this is about the time that we want to start thinking about the user interface for the heat exchanger monitoring solution. We probably want to show the maintenance events, along with the calculation results, and perhaps a simple model to forecast the performance. Just like the Python SDK simplifies the development of our models, it also greatly simplifies the development and scaling of Python data science applications. We frequently use Streamlit for prototypes and Poppy Dash for our richer user experiences. Like our functions templates, we'll soon be releasing our application templates and components for you to build your own applications. Tune in on Cognite Hub to stay up to date and to see some of our reference architectures for how we set up an OAuth proxy to secure these Python web applications. And so to summarize, we've gone through a pretty simple flow to show what your data science architecture can look like. In your data science team, you need to arm yourself with a number of tools and technologies to get your models to production. We have found that most of the complexity lies in the data layer, which is where Cognite Data Fusion is a great simplifier. On top of that, we can also offer guidance and templates for how to build your data science application according to modern dev DevOps practices. I hope that you learned something today and hope to see you on Cognite Hub and in the Cognite Academy e-learning courses. Back to you, Pateri. Thanks, Jake. Now this concludes our Cognite Application Developer Sessions planned content today. I do thank you all for tuning in for the past hour and I look forward to an engaging community Q&A on Cognite Hub next. Now, if you haven't joined Cognite Hub yet, now's the perfect time to open a new tab. Just hit hub.cognite.com and join the Cognite Data Fusion Industrial Application Developer Community, where this session from today will continue next. With that, I thank you once again. I look forward to seeing you shortly on Cognite Hub.